Hello, I am Alessandro and I'm going to present our work on learning one-shot imitation from humans without humans. This work was done at Imperial College London together with Stephen James and Andrew Davison from the Dyson Robotics Lab. Humans can naturally learn how to execute a new task by seeing it performed a few times or just even once. And they can then perform it in a variety of environments and situations. Learning from observing another human performing it and then imitating them is a very immediate and easy way of transferring knowledge. This same capability is very useful in robots, as it allows them to be easily and quickly taught tasks by any person, and also allows for a seamless human-to-robot interaction. So our goal is to build a system that can take a visual human demonstration of a new task and be able to reproduce it in a variety of configurations. For example, Let's say the task is placing the strawberry in the green bowl. We want our robot to place the strawberry in the green bowl after seeing this single demonstration in different settings. Now, previous work in imitation learning from observing humans has tackled the problem in a variety of ways, including by manually specifying a mapping between human actions and robot actions by explicitly tracking the human end, and more recently, by an end-to-end -end system that can infer tasks from a single video of a human through meta-learning, leveraging a large amount of data for the meta-training tasks. This final method is a data-driven approach that requires thousands of video examples of a person who is physically performing the tasks and teleoperating the robot, which means that there has to be a long and active human presence to collect the dataset, with no guarantee that the collected training data is good and that it allows the learning system to generalize well enough. The approach to the one-shot human imitation learning problem that we present does not require an active manual intervention during training and can therefore save tens or even hundreds of researchers' hours. In practice, we rely on previous work on task-embedded control networks to infer a policy by embedding human demonstrations and we avoid any human intervention during training by performing all training and simulation and introducing a novel application of domain randomization, human sim to real. A task embedded control network is formed of an embedded network and a control network, which are trained jointly. In the example shown before, we want the robot to place the strawberry in the green bowl. This is a new task that the robot has not seen before. The human performs the demonstration, which is observed by the robot through an over the shoulder camera. The robot embeds the demonstration in the task embedding network to form a compact representation of the task, which we call context. We now shuffle the scene to ask the robot to perform it in a new configuration. The control network takes the static context along with what the robot is seeing and its current joint angles, and it outputs the motor velocities for the robot to complete the task in a closed loop manner, having only seen the task once in that single human demonstration. This setup only expects the visual demonstration during test time, which makes it ideal for learning from human demonstrations. Let's say we now want the robot to perform another new task, for example, placing the lemon in the red bowl. Now, this embedding lives somewhere else in the embedding space. Now, let's look at what happens during training. As mentioned, we collect the training dataset in simulation which does not require human intervention, and rather, it can easily be parallelized. We built a model of a human arm with 26 degrees of freedom, 7 in the arm and 19 in the end, and we imported it in the simulation environment Compelliosim, together with a model of the robot to control them using inverse kinematics. We apply domain randomization to the different elements in the scene to generate multiple examples of a variety of tasks. Then at each time step of each demonstration, we collect the image, the joint angles, and the joint velocities for both human arm and the robot. A large data set of tasks is therefore formed of multiple examples for each task, each with a human and a robot demonstration. Examples of tasks from the resulting data set are sampled to form three sets, a support set of human examples, a query set of human examples, and a set of robot examples. The human support set is used to infer which task to perform, and we therefore pass it as the input to the task embedding network to generate a vector for each example. The resulting vectors for the different examples of a particular task 
are used to compute the compact representation of the task, the context, by just taking the normalized mean. The embeddings of the task examples in the query set are now used to drive the dot product of the query example and the difference between the corresponding context and the negative context is to be at least a factor of margin. In other words, we train the embedding network to produce a higher dot product similarity between the embedding of the example of a task and its context than to contexts of other tasks. This loss helps learning an embedding space in which tasks that are visually and semantically similar are also close in the embedding space. We now concatenate the context for a task together with the observation from the robot set. This observation is the image and the joint angles at a random timestamp of an example for that task. On top of the embedding loss, we optimize for a behavior cloning loss, or control loss, which is just the L2 distance between the predicted robot actions output by the control network and the robot actions actually recorded in the dataset, for that example, at the time step. The final loss is the combination of the embedding loss, the control loss on the support set for the human examples, and the control loss on the robot examples. We tested our approach first in simulation and then in the real world on two tasks, placing into a container with two other destructors and pushing an object to target with one destructor by following test scenarios from previous work. Testing happens as described previously, a human demonstration is captured by over-the-shoulder camera, the scene is changed, and the current state and observation of the robot is passed together with the human demonstration to the network. Our approach has comparable performance to state-of-the-art methods trained with real-world data. Most importantly, our system is robust to large visual domain shifts. For example, a different background between the human demonstration and the robot performing the task. Although we achieve this performance with our real-world data, there are a few limitations to this approach. Firstly, when generating data, we generate linear inverse kinematics trajectories for both the human arm and the robot, and we therefore don't get a diverse range of trajectories in a dataset. This, nevertheless, has a small impact, as we only take the first and the last frame of a human demonstration to compute the embedding. Secondly, there may be a trade-off between training simulation and using real-world data. Real-world data can theoretically be collected by anyone, whereas setting up a sim to real environment may potentially require more expertise. Here, perhaps a good simulation environment interface could help overcome this issue. And lastly, the tasks are not very diverse. Here we follow the definition in literature and previous work of a task, which is basically an instance of an action we believe it is important to tackle one-shot imitation learning over a more diverse range of tasks, and it is something we will consider in future work. In conclusion, we have presented an approach to the one-shot human imitation learning problem that leverages zero human interaction during training time. We extended task embedded control networks to infer control policies by embedding human demonstrations to achieve one-shot imitation learning. Secondly, and most importantly, we show that we are able to perform sim to real on humans, which allows us to train our system with no real-world data. With this approach, we are able to achieve similar performance to a state-of-the-art alternative that relies on thousands of trained demonstrations collected in the real world, and at the same time, we remain robust to visual domain shifts, such as substantially different backgrounds. In the future, we are looking at obtaining the simulated human arm trajectories from our enforcement learning algorithm, which means we would get a more diverse range of behaviors we could train the embedding network with. We also want to investigate a variety of human actions that could be transferred from simulation to reality, applying the same method to the entire human person instead of just the arm. Thank you.